Hey guys, family, it's your servant Liza here, and I have a word for you from the Lord that cannot wait. The Lord put it on my heart to uh, deliver it, and I'm going to talk to you today about the sheep and the goat and the difference between the two. The sheep is representative of the followers of Christ, of those who follow Jesus. And the goat is representative of those who follow their own way and the ways of the devil. I'm going to specifically also inform you on a goat tree spirit. You know, a lot of times as, you know, people, we see the natural realm around us, everyday things, but we neglect and fail to realize that there is a spiritual realm working around us as well filled with spirits that influence and torment. And uh, the goat tree spirit is is one that a sneak up on you if you do not uh, have a consistent relationship with God. Um, but before I get started, let's just pray. Father, I thank you in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, for your spirit. Father, filling me up, God, I thank you that I will speak through the anointing through the powerful words of your throne room, God. And I thank you, Lord, that as I speak, that the ear gates of the people are open to receive what the spirit of the Lord is saying. Father, I thank you, God, that they will be able to take from this word and eat and receive, Father, everything they need, the nourishment they need right where they are in their spiritual journey with you, that they may apply it to their lives. And I thank you for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're going to be coming out of Matthew 25, 31 through 46. Um, I'm going to specifically read Matthew 25, 31 through 33 out of the NIV version. And then I'll paraphrase um, for the rest of it. A lot of times people will confuse sheep and goats. While they have similarities, people fail to realize that they really are different. And even the Bible talks about how different they really are. And as a follower of Christ, you need to know the difference and you need to understand it practically for your life today, what's going on in your life and how you are living uh, as a believer or whether you're not a believer, uh, why uh, it's important that you understand the differences in the ways that we live our life and what makes you uh, a goat type of spirit. Matthew 25, 31 through 33 says, when the son of man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. In the Bible, there's a lot of symbolism used, but there's also a lot of practical things. You know, Jesus calls himself the shepherd. And he uses a shepherd and his sheep and the, and the mannerisms, the characteristics, the things that they do to describe his relationship with us, the body. However, he also uses other animals um, in those families uh, to describe what we are not to be. And goats is that version here. A sheep follows Christ. Therefore, even the things that a sheep does naturally will match up with that. Whereas a goat follows its own ways and is synonymous with the devil. If you don't believe me, there's a spirit called Baphomet, and I will get into that later, that celebrities uh, claim, and it has a goat head. There are also other symbolisms, the Masons, the Eastern stars that use that upside down pentagram that's also known as the goat head or the Baphomet. But before I get ahead of myself, let's go to 
34 through 46. I'm going to paraphrase. And Jesus is talking to the people. And what he's saying to them is when you're giving, if you've given to those who are thirsty, if you fed the hungry, if you've given strangers uh, your time, clothing, if you've given people in prison things, helping, giving, you are a sheep. You are of the body of Christ. If you are selfish, if you never want to do anything for anyone else, it's all about you. And even when you do help somebody, there's a benefit for you in it. You don't give just to give out of your heart. You are a goat. And the Lord said in these particular verses, that he knows the sheep from the goat. And he's going to tell the goats that not only are they cursed, but he said, depart from me. I don't know you. A sheep has a sociable instinct. So I'm going to talk about characteristics between sheeps and goats. We're starting off with the sheep. A sheep has a sociable instinct. What does that mean? A group mentality. A sheep is meant to be with their flock and they follow the shepherd. So they follow a leader. They do not want to be a part. When they get a part, they get lonely. They get nervous. They get scared. And the and the and um, even uh, scholars say that uh, they will die because of loneliness. What this equates to with you as a believer is you are to be connected to the body of Christ and we are connected to the shepherd, which is Jesus. And Jesus even assigns us under shepherds, which are pastors. That's in Ephesians chapter four, pastors who, who lead us and guide us. So a sheep is always going to be connected to the body of Christ somehow. And then they are also going to have a leader and their ultimate leader is Jesus. They also have a covering that is wool. Wool is known to um, not only be made for a covering for humans, but for them, sheep can um, withstand storms. They can withstand different types of weather because of the wool that they carry. Um, the Bible talks about the wool being pure or white as snow. So not only do they have protection over them on the covering, but the purity of a, of a sheep is indicative of you being part of the body of Christ and having Jesus as a leader. Let me switch to the goat real quick. A goat is unlike a sheep is independent. They don't want to be part of a group because they are the group. They got a personality. And even though you'll see goats together, they're perfectly fine being on their own. Okay. So goats are very independent. Um, it says that goats like to, um, their, their skin browns naturally, but on its own. And God gave me a revelation because we talked about skin before being flesh, right? That's when you're doing what you want to do. And a skin browning, the brown color represents the, the, it, the interpretation of it is work. So flesh work, okay? Doing what you want to do by yourself on its own. And so one thing God pointed out to me is goats, unlike sheep, don't need to follow a shepherd. They don't have a shepherd. They will do things on their own and kind of doing what they want to do. Going back to a sheep, a sheep grazes and eats vegetation at ground level. They eat green grass and they eat roots. Okay. They eat rich nutrients only and only what they can consume. So they're not greedy and they don't just eat anything. And they're not trying to go higher 
than where they're supposed to be. Okay. And what that means for a believer is that when you are taking in the word of God and you're growing and developing as a sheep, you are not trying to get ahead of the shepherd. You're not trying to get ahead of Jesus. You're not trying to get ahead of the pastor. You are eating the nutrients, whatever God is placing before you at the time, you're eating that. And then you're eating what's rich for you. You're knowing that what the shepherd is leading you with, what you're eating in that area is exactly where you need to be. And you're humble. You're at a ground level. You are humble as a sheep, as a believer, as a follower. You're not trying to get above. Going back to the goat, a goat likes to eat tender leaves of trees, the tips of the leaf only. They also like to rise on their hind limbs and reach the highest vegetation. So instead of eating at ground level, eating green grass, they want to go get all of the, 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 the shrubs, they eat everything. They will rise up to a tree on their hind legs, take bits and pieces of stuff and eat everything around it. What does this mean? Is that goats are taking in everything they can get. And when they're rising up on their hind legs to eat vegetation, they're trying to get ahead. They're trying to exalt themselves. They're trying to take things because remember, they're not a follower. They're independent. And even taking a little bit of the leaves, you know, the Lord gave me revelation is sometimes they can even go to church and call themselves believers and followers, but take a piece of Jesus, take a little bit of what the pastor's saying and then run with it on their own. They're going to make it their own. They're going to rise above where God has called them to be, and they're going to start taking that little bit and just doing what they want to do with it. I also learned in, in looking at the goat that when they eat even what's present on the surface, because again, they eat anything, it's usually stuff that's low in nutrients and has chemical substances made by man. Oh, come on. Somebody got to get this revelation. So goats not only eat everything. Remember, sheep ate stuff that was nutrient that was nutrients. They stayed humble. They followed the shepherd. They followed the pastor's voice. And they received what they need to grow and develop. Whereas a goat is eating any and everything and only what benefits them. They're rising high above to eat. They really can be independent. They don't need no leader. And not only that, but we're taking things from man only. And it's low in nutrients. It's not going to sustain you spiritually. Somebody walk with me. This is signs of the enemy. Signs of the devil. Remember in Isaiah 14 and three, it says, and this is talking about Lucifer, the devil, when he was an angel, Isaiah says, you said in your heart, I will ascend to the heavens. I will raise myself above the stars. I will sit enthroned on the Mount of assembly on the utmost heights of Mount Zaphon. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. I will make myself like the most high. I'm going to make myself like God doing what you want to do, being independent, not following Jesus, the shepherd, or even the leaders he puts above you at the time. Cause you want to exalt yourself. You want to eat that little bit. That is antichrist tendencies. That is devilish behavior. So there is a difference between a sheep and a goat. 
Let me give you an example in the word. Genesis 21 and 29. Isaac, the covenant child, Abraham's son, versus Ishmael, the bond woman's son, the slave. I feel the presence of the Holy Ghost. And, and there's a difference. There's a difference, people. Although Ishmael was born first and, and it was known that the first children get the inheritance, not this time, because I have to point out to you this goat spirit that took over Abraham, his wife, Sarah, and then her maidservant, Hagar. I want to show you how the goat tree spirit was at work. Now, before I go into this, in Daniel, I believe it's chapter five, but when Nebuchadnezzar had a dream and the God interpreted it through Daniel, they mentioned that the tree was a person. So the goat tree spirit is indicative of a goat person spirit, a spirit that's in a person that is acting like a goat. And it's from the kingdom of Satan, of darkness. Okay. I'll get into more of what attaches itself to that. But for Ishmael versus Isaac, the Bible said that Ishmael came as a result of Sarai, which is Abraham's wife. Her name at the time was Sarai. She was barren, couldn't have kids at the time, but God promised her and Abraham a son. Instead of waiting she went and told her maid servant Hagar, why don't you sleep with my husband, lay with him and give him a son? God was nowhere in that. So she essentially had her husband commit adultery because they were married. And when they slept together, they had a son, which was Ishmael but he was not born of the marriage. Therefore, he was not a covenant son. So as he grew up and as Isaac came about, then the Bible says that Ishmael mocked the covenant child. And all of a sudden, Sarai was like, y'all got to get up out of here. You got to get up out my house. I'm not having it. And God granted Sarai and Abraham, this when Abraham went to talk to him. She sent them away and God allowed it. You know why? Because Isaac was a covenant child. He was born of the marriage. And God had already promised them this child. Ishmael was not of the covenant. He came in a covenant of man. This was an agreement made by Sarai, Abraham, and Hagar. God did not tell her to do that. But what a good God we have. So goat spirit, doing what you want to do. That's what Sarai did. Couldn't wait on God, even though he promised them a child, doing what she wants to do. Got her maidservant involved. Now the maidservant's son, who she raised up, who's not of your same even uh, beliefs, laughing at your son, really mocking or, um, you know, scoffing and, and uh, in a uh, jester type of way, um, was mocking the covenant child, was mocking the blessing. And God showed me, even though Ishmael had his DNA, he did not have the blessing. He did not have the blessing of God to, for him to be born of those two people. But yet and still, when Abraham went to God and begged for his son to, to have a blessing, God still took care of him. But it doesn't change the fact that he was not made of a covenant from God. So therefore that goat spirit was back at work. Sarah took a situation or Sarai took a situation into her own hands. Goat mindset. And not only that, I want to show you how it connects to the garden to bring back and connection to that old serpent called the devil. Because 
in the garden, when Eve listened to the serpent, she committed adultery. The Bible said her and Adam were married. So here, adultery, Hagar coming on in as a result of Sarai making a decision to listen to the devil's voice. Goat mindset, goat mindset. And it goes back to the woman deciding what they're going to do for the family. Some of you, I gave you the man down situation word. I've given you things about your flesh. I've given you things about the garden. Listen, it all comes back full circle. So she decides that she don't want to wait on God and who her husband's going to sleep with to bring them a kid. And now it's not working out and you're kicking them out. But the only reason that God allowed that was because the sheep and the goats can't live together. Sheep and goats can't reside together. They did not have a sheep mentality. Hagar was of Egyptian, was of a different belief system. And though her son had Abraham's DNA, he followed right through mocking God, God's covenant child. Because that was really what it was representative of. Isaac was the promise to Abraham and Sarai, to their marriage, and Ishmael mocked that. So I want I want you to sh I want to show you something that God showed me that I thought was powerful. An immature goat is called a kid, and so Hagar and the kid were banished from the land. Light and dark can't live in the same place. And even Hagar and Abraham came together to have a kid, a goat, a goat child. So Ishmael was representative of the goat, Isaac representative of the sheep. The sad part, if you fall into this goat type of mentality, is that the enemy is still going to take full credit for his ideas. He's still going to take full credit because that's how prideful this spirit is. The goat tree spirit itself. This is what the Lord showed me. It partners with unbelief. A spirit of fear, excuse me. Worry. Mammon, which is money. Money, celebrities, money, money, money. It's all about even when you're just working in your job and all you care about is how much money you're bringing home and God is not in that, you are messing with a goat spirit. I once thought all I need is this great job, a house, my picket fence, and a family. That's it. Goat mentality because God was nowhere in that. Self-dependence, you're depending on yourself. Self-sufficient, I can take care of myself. I can do this by myself. I don't need nobody. Remember that the sheep are together with the flock. God didn't put you here alone. You are going to need somebody. You're going out by yourself, but technically you're not because we're all gonna be with Christ. Those that have uh, followed Christ in spirit and in truth and truly have repented, accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord, they're gonna be with other believers. Uh, so self-sufficient is a, is, a, is a spirit that's connected to this. Baphomet which is the goat head. And I explained that this is a spirit that has a head of a goat, female and male body parts. And it's used uh, for sa satanic reasons, but it's representative of the goat spirit of Satan. Um, pride is connected to the goat tree spirit. And there are ancestral spirits, meaning that you can pass this on through generations. If you don't believe me about the celebrities, Eminem, uh, Beyonce, when she was doing her little I am Sasha Fierce thing, uh, many celebrities have called LL Cool J, I'm the GOAT, greatest of all time, greatest of all time, but, this, the, but the, uh, acronym is still GOAT. And if you notice celebrities bring about idol worship, 
That's another thing. You know, look at me, support me, watch me, do this for me. But it's not for God. Millions of people are spending money on them, trying to look like them, trying to be them, want to follow them, want to sing their songs, want to do all those things. That is goat mentality. The Bible says, don't think of yourself higher than you ought. When you're a sheep eating at ground level and you're humble, and you're humble, the Lord will exalt you. God will bring you to those higher places. Unlike King Herod, who was definitely a goat mentality, a goat head. Ephesians chapter six, talk about spiritual wickedness in high places. He put his, his uh, uh, kingdom, he put his, his throne, his palace, I saw it physically in Israel on a high mountain. That thing was so high. We had to take a cable car all the way up there to get there. It was high in the mountains. That's why the Bible, when the, when God talks about moving mountains, he's not only talking about, you know, just problems. He's talking about wickedness and high places. If you have a mustard seed of faith, oh, don't get me started. Ooh, I feel the, the power of God. People as sheep, we need to understand. We need to understand. We need to understand the characteristics of God, how, how to get out of these type of mentalities. If you're raising your family on your own, I'm the one, I got to do it. Because sometimes, you know, men or even women that are raising their families get into this mentality and you're doing it without God. That's a goat head mentality. You wonder why you're struggling to, to keep it afloat. Everything's falling on you all the time. You have to give it to God. Be that sheep, be that follower, because God has all the answers that you need. He said, lay your burdens at my feet and I will give you rest. Those that are laid and heavy burdened, all the burdens you're carrying, lay them at his feet. God, let me know that it's important for you to understand that even Jesus, when he came, the Bible said that he came as a servant. He came and he washed his disciples' feet. And he made sure, even when Peter was saying, no, you don't need to do this. He expressed to him, yes, I do, or you don't have any part with me. What he was saying is as a sheep, you have to understand that you're a servant first. I don't care how high you get. Jesus is the highest of the high. He is God. And he came to serve. Humbly. Humble. So whether you're a sheep and you become a shepherd, you still need to stay humble as a servant. You never get high above God because again, goat spirit, again, devil who said, I'll ride, I'll put my throne above God. I'm going to be like him. It's God who's doing things, even in those of you who are working in ministry, who are doing things for God. It is God's spirit who is doing those things in you. I give all glory and honor and credit to God for the things that he's done in my life. And I, I ask that, that those of you in leadership uh, continue to, to do the same. Uh, my husband, Pastor Gus, he was he was working with me when we were studying this word together. Um, you know, God bless him. He, he's in Kuwait. And, and I hope the Lord brings him home soon. But he said this. He said when he when God was showing him all these things, he said he got a prophetic image of what is currently happening in the body of Christ today. He said, those that are acting like goats, instead of investing in what is well-connected and rooted in rich spiritual sustenance, he said, goats eat what is convenient, even if it has thorns. Oh, I thought that was so powerful. They eat what is convenient, even if it has thorns. He said, instead of going to a good Bible-believing church, 
They would much rather listen to false prophets on TV or people talking on social media that don't use the word of God to teach. He said, while some are eating green vegetation, speaking spiritually because it looked good, instead it's filled with toxins from man, things that are not fundamental truths. And what I took from what he said, which, which was so much meat in there, so powerful, was that goats would much rather feed off of somebody that's going to exalt them than to learn from where God has them at right then. And waiting for God to exalt them in his timing. They would much rather watch a motivational speaker or, or somebody who's going to make them feel good than somebody who's using the word of God to help them find their calling, operated in it, and not only that, but use power to do it. The power of the Holy Spirit. Instead, they want something with no deliverance. So they're walking around with their same issues and just somebody talking about their drama. God's family, you know, I pray that that's not you. And if you find yourself doing some of these things, these goat tendencies, that, that you change your ways, you know, um, that you come and you understand that there is a shepherd Jesus said, I am the, the good shepherd. He said, I am the good shepherd and my sheep know my voice. They will not listen to the voice of a stranger. Pastor God said, if you are a sheep and know the shepherd, Jesus Christ, you will not eat what is offered to you at first. You will eat from the root and not what is dense, but has nourishment for your spirit. Luke 15, three and seven says the shepherd will go after the lost sheep. He will leave the 99 and go after the one. This means that Jesus will leave all those that are following him to come after you. If you're that one, if you're that one that's getting away, that's starting to look like a goat, because remember we said they had similarities, but you know you're not. Come on back. The Lord is waiting for you. He loves you. He's looking for you. Allow yourself to be found. Allow yourself to be found. Isaiah, I want to leave you with this. Isaiah 5 and 20 says, Woe to them that call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness. Remember I said that sheep and goats look alike. Some people confuse them, but they are not. They are not. Which one are you? And maybe today you're acting like a goat and you needed to, to recognize that. But I need you to reflect on this word, God's family, and to really get in a place where you, you know, are reflecting on your relationship with God consistently. Have you strove away from your pastor because you didn't like something he, he or she said to, to help you get in line with the word of God? Have you walked away from church altogether? Because you don't want to look at some of those things in you that's looking goatish selfish, doing what you want to do. If so, make a change today. Make a change today. I pray that this word blesses you, God's family. I pray that you get something from it. I pray that you know that this greatest of all time mentality is of the enemy. Because we have flaws, we have things. Even Muhammad Ali, who called himself the greatest of all time, was defeated. Because the only greatest one of all time is God, is Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father, we just thank you in the mighty name of Jesus for this amazing and powerful word. I thank you, Lord, that we are humbly eating, Father, the grass 
of, of the ground level of the field, Father. I thank you, Lord, that it's giving us nourishment, Father, that we may grow and develop as your follower and your believer, Father, even to become under shepherds for others, Father, to, to feed your sheep, Father, and even go after those that have strayed away. Father, we bind every goat tendency, every goat head, every goat-like spirit, Father, in the name of Jesus, and we command them out of your body of Christ. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you won't tell any that have heard this message, depart from me, that you never knew them, but that you love them, you welcome them with open arms, Father, because they have submitted themselves to your will and your way. And I thank you, Lord, God, that, that this word, Father, is a covering for us, a weathering through any storm. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you, God's family. Um, we hope to see you back here. If you um, got something from this video, please share it with somebody else. Please let people know about uh, this ministry. And um, I just pray uh, that you all have an amazing, amazing day, rest of your day and an even beautiful week. I love you. God bless you. And the Lord put it on my heart. If you are not saved and you are watching this video and God led you here, it was not an accident. If you want to give your life to Christ, I want you to repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I don't know you, but I want to know you. I give you my heart at this moment and I ask you to come into my life. I confess that you are Lord. I believe that you died on the cross for my sin and that you rose again on the third day. I thank you for coming into my life and changing me into a new creature. I believe in you and I have faith in what you're going to do with me. Amen. The Bible said, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ was Lord and that he died on the cross and rose again, that you are saved. And now I want you to work on, you know, sanctification, live in your life for Christ and allowing Christ to change you. Come back and see us again. Get yourself in a Bible believing church. If you have to go somewhere physically and you're far away and continue to allow Christ to change you. We love you. God bless you. You are part of God's family.